Life is all about relationships. Lovers, family, body, or money. How satisfied you are can be completely explained by how you relate to things around you. This is Sophie Jaffe, and together with my husband, Dr. D. Jaffe, we are here to explore and teach you how to maximize your relationships and achieve a happier life. Let's get ignited. Thanks to Chosen Foods for supporting the Ignited podcast. Chosen Foods is a health food company with a focus on real, nourishing food. They offer a variety of healthy fats, plant-based proteins, and ancient superfoods. You know I love that. I love Chosen Foods because of their 100% pure coconut oil spray. It's so versatile, I can add it to sautéed veggies, to my scrambled eggs, or anything else. They have no harmful propellants or emulsifiers. They're making healthy cooking and eating an absolute breeze, which is exactly what I need with three kids and a husband who barely cooks. Okay, breakfast and maybe one other meal a week. (laughs) Thank you for that. Uh, All you got to do to get our special discount is head to chosenfoods.com forward slash I-G-N-T-D ignited and use the promo code ignited 50 during checkout for 50 percent off your order people that is a lot of discount for some amazing amazing oils get some chosen foods hello and welcome to this episode of the ignited podcast i'm adi jaffe and i'm sophie jaffe and we're coming to you live yes we are from a rainy day almost yeah it's like it's fall in la yeah it's going to supposedly thunderstorm lately. I later, felt a I little rain. Yeah, sprinkle. I was on my bike and water hit my uh, my windshield. Yep, I heard on the east side in Silver Lake it was raining this morning. Actual rain? Yeah. All right, news alert. Uh, it's probably not raining by the time you guys are listening to this, but you know, that's, that's important uh, to know. Rain does fall in Los Angeles and it's like gray outside right now. We love it. I love yeah. a change. Yeah, it's just nice. You know, we always talk about how there are no seasons in LA and so it's kind of nice to actually see some seasons. Yeah. Um, happy fall, everyone. Happy fall. Yeah, um, I love October. It's the best month. Yeah, it's I literally like fall hit. We got some gray. I yeah. like it. Um, I'm going to start doing this thing again. We did a little bit before, but I did a few at a time. We're going to start doing like a fan of the week, little reading. And today's fan of the week is actually from a review on iTunes. We love your five-star ratings and reviews. If you want to leave us one, maybe we'll read it here. Uh, This is from S. Duors. Hope I pronounced that right. This podcast is fantastic. I found it. I've been plowing through the old episodes. They are so real and open. I think they're talking about us. Uh, I have no addiction issues, but I found Adi's philosophy and insight really helpful. Sophie is adorable and so intuitive. That is true. Uh, I wasn't sure if I'd enjoy a husband-wife duo, but it's refreshing and relatable as a working mom and wife, and I think they balance each other out. Their topics nail it every time. Uh. That exclamation point was not put by me. Now I just want to hang out with them. Well... You As are. Doors, you're hanging out with us That's right now. That's exactly why we created this podcast for all the amazingness that we talk about, discuss in our home around our kitchen table. Absolutely. That's what we're doing exactly now. So, so you're, you're hanging with you're us. You're hanging out with us. And thank you so much for leaving that review. Um, we really appreciate it. We read all of these. So. Thank you guys so much. A uh, reminder, as you're listening to this, if you want to just grab a screenshot, we love these. When you uh, just screenshot as you're listening, maybe video it and share. Um, all you've got to do is tag me, Dr. Adi Jaffe, tag Sophie, which is sophie.jaffe, or ignited.me, I-G-N-T-D dot me. We will see it. We will screenshot it. We will talk about it right here, and you'll get to hear about yourself as you're listening to the next podcast. It's very meta. <laughs> It is meta. This whole thing is meta. Let's be meta. honest. Yeah, we are we are in meta. Um, okay, so the interview today is with Sebastian, who you guys are all going to meet in a little bit. What a dope, amazing guy. Um, but really, the conversation for me with him got me started thinking so much about the concept of giving and contribution. This is something I work with my clients on a lot taking yourself out of your own head and contributing to other people. Um, Every single day, this is something that you should just ask yourself, what have I done for someone else? If you're a parent, you're kind of (laughs) 
uh, automatically doing this every single day, but seriously, but I what feel can like, you do for somebody else <laughs> where it's not self-fulfilling? Well, not just self-fulfilling, but also not like a duty, right? right? So yeah, you take care of other people all the time when you're a parent, but you get a little resentful of it because you have to. This, what he talks about, which is so beautiful, is the act of giving for giving sake exactly. when there's nothing in it for you. Yep. It's not about taking care of your kid. There's, you don't have a relationship to this person. It's just about giving to somebody else based on their need, which is another thing that I really love. It's not like, you know, sure, you can give $10 to charity or you can do that sort of stuff. And then you kind of, by proxy, you're like throwing money at something going, yeah, I know people are hungry. Let me give something. That's very different than on a regular basis, let's say, giving some food to somebody that you regularly see on the street and helping them in a real way. Um, I or think making dinner for a, a mom of four kids who's working all the time or bringing it to your sick neighbor who is struggling and needs totally. some chicken soup or, you know, you've got a 93-year-old neighbor in your apartment building that make, that it's hard for them to get healthy food into their bodies. Yeah. There's so many ways to give. 100%. And um, Seb talks about this awesome, awesome website that he literally launched the day that we interviewed him. And you'll be able to hear about it, log on, and people ask for what they need and you can contribute back. So amazing. You'll hear more about it in this podcast, but it's so cool. And what a beautiful concept again, right? Um, we are so focused in LA, this can happen, but I'm sure wherever you're listening from, we focus so much on success and success in the context of how many followers do you have? How much money did you make last month? What car do you drive? Where have you traveled this year? Like blah, 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 these blah, things, blah. these achievements and the concept of starting to measure your success by how many people you've helped or what impact you've made, I think is really Huge. a really, really beautiful thing. And we, we get so bogged down, yeah, so bogged down, so wrapped up in our own crap that I feel like we just don't, we don't give it the value that it, that it deserves, you know, in the end as humans. And it's funny because we just did an interview that'll be up in a couple of weeks about that same concept of as humans, yes, there is a preservation portion of what we do, but there's the community part that just helping each other out just for that, just because. Because it feels good. It feels good to give. Yeah. There's actually, there's so much research. I don't know if you ever talked about this, but there's, I cite this a lot for, um, for some of the people I work with. There was a study conducted, I'm sorry, I don't remember the researcher in the university, I need to look it up. Uh, we will put a citation for it somewhere. But a study where participants were brought in to a lab at a university and they they went through a little uh, exercise. And that was the setup because at the end of that exercise, they were told, hey, because of these answers you gave during the test, you won $5. And so they gave them $5 and... Um, they gave it to them in cash. And as they exited the lab, that's actually when the experiment started because the experimenters set up somebody who was asking for money right outside of the building. And so they knew this person had money walking out because they just given them the cash. And this person was asking for it, kind of really, you know, panhandling on the, on the campus. And what they did then is they followed up with the individuals after, later on that day, and they asked the question, asked, asked them to rate the quality of their day, how enjoyable, how good was their day. And what they found was a relationship between how much money that those individuals gave to the person who was panhandling outside the building and how they rated their own day. And so while we're all sitting here concerned about how do we get more, and this is just one study, what it actually showed is the people who gave away more money, and as in they didn't keep the $5 for themselves, they didn't win $5, they actually gave as much of it away as possible. The more they gave away, the better they rated their day. So, so if you're totally right, there's a body of research that shows that giving to other people makes you feel good. So there's almost like a selfish element to giving, but I feel like we lost that. Yeah, absolutely. It makes you a happier person. Makes yeah. your mood better by giving. Yeah. Um, I try to engage in this as much as I can. I mean, obviously, again, like we talked about before, a lot of my actual work is around giving. Yeah. Um, we do the volunteering at Project Angel Food. What are some other things you do in life to connect to this? I mean, I try and do this as often as possible. Like, especially like the, we talked about this on the podcast, but like paying for the person behind you. I mm. love doing that. And it's, it's funny, it's actually more fulfilling when I don't see the person behind me. Like if it, there's no one there yet and I'm like, here, just keep the change and, and pay for the next two cars behind me. It's such a good feat. Imagine that person that's behind. Totally. 
just randomly, like there's not even anyone to like, oh, that was that woman up there. Oh, that was that, you know, mom. Not gonna, attaching it to anything, just a little surprise. Yeah. I love that so much. And, ta- you know, and, and restoring somebody's almost like belief faith. in humanity and exactly. faith in humanity, right? Exactly. Because who knows? Maybe they're having a really shitty day and they're Honestly, walking it around. turns my mood around. Like I think I was actually having a bad day the last time that I did it. I was having a bad day. Oh, that's cool. And, and I did you. it and I was like, oh, like it's one of those tools. You know, we always talk about tools in your toolbox. One of the tools for making yourself get out of a funk when you're in a bad place is giving back, volunteering, yeah. giving to others. I know when one of my best friends was struggling, going through a breakup, she was like trying to figure out what to do to get out of her dark place. And she was hitting all the things. She's like, okay, I worked out today. Okay. And she was like down on the ground, like mm. super low, low, low. And she's like, okay, check, worked out today, check, slept, check, n- nurtured my body. And then we were like, it's time to give back. So she went back to this place she used to volunteer. Oh, that's cool. It's just one of the things in the self care box. And then in one of the things that get, makes you have a happier, fuller life. Yeah. There's, um, if you go to ignited.com, by the way, and get on our mailing list, I send you out the wheel of life assessment, the same one that I use in my ignited recovery course. Um, but you get it completely for free just for signing up. And I actually added a couple of slices to it because it's an eight slice wheel of life normally. And I added two and one of them is purpose and the other is contribution because I think that's how important this is. If I had to pick 10 categories in life that matter, uh, contributing to other people around you is absolutely one of those things. Um, and so I think this is huge. You're going to see, I mean, we're talking about it here, Sebastian, otherwise known as Seb 100 Things on Instagram, if you all want to look him up even before we get to talking to him, he has made this a life. And you'll hear, I mean, honestly, you know, you hear the impact. It's like when he talks and and you talk to him about what have been his struggles, all this kind of stuff, you're going to hear his answers. And it's going to show you the level of impact. First of all, the level of struggle, because it wasn't easy from the beginning when he started doing this. And the way he got to it was not as, as straight of an arrow as you might think it is. He's been doing this for 10 years, right? Well, so nine or 10 years ago, he walked out of his own life to pursue his own hundred things. Right. Exactly. But in the last few years, it's become about helping other people pursue their hundred exactly. things. And exactly, I'm, Noah. Oh, you're going to see the power. Yeah. Noah's really excited about this concept. Noah's going to leave the house tomorrow and start working on her hundred things. <laughs> uh, number one, crawl. <gasps> number two, well, actually, maybe number one is like pick her body up. That's <laughs> probably first. Uh, yeah, I can roll my body. One of Seb's was skydiving naked. Yep. I don't know that would be on my list, but hey, you all get to make your own list. Exactly. So listen to Seb. And you, I mean, if this guy's not inspirational, I don't know what it is to you guys. And you're going to love, love, love this one. Um, I want to tie the relationship tip of the week to this kind of interview. And that is A, start focusing on others and B, ask for what you need. So it's kind of like a dual purpose. And I know we talked about some of these things before, but you're going to see when Seb talks about this new website that he set up. Not only do we not focus enough on others, but we've gotten to this place where we feel like we have to be so self-sufficient and reliant. It's bad to ask for what you need. Yeah. And in relationships, self, I know this happens all the time. One of the interviews we did today, right, was um, we really got to this also in the end there about even in a relationship like us, even 14 years later when we've talked about everything, we've worked through all this stuff, saying to somebody else, hey, I'm in a really low place and I need you to say something good to me about who I am right now so I can pick myself up feels needy or weak somehow, even though it really shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we hit this a lot, very often. You've got to ask for what you need. No one else is going to do that for you. No one else is going to just give you what you want. No one can read your mind. Even Adi and I have been together 14 years now. It's crazy, but like 14 years, I was a child when we met. We both were. And he still can't read my mind. It's just not going to happen. And if, if I wait around till he does decide to read my mind... I'm just wasting my time yeah. away. But also I want to give, right? Like if I know what will help, I need. Yeah. then I'm all about it. I just need to know so I can serve the purpose and, and give you what you need, which is beautiful. Again, somebody has to ask, like somebody has to tell you, hey, I'm having a really hard time making food for me and my family for you to know to bring them food. Exactly. Because if you don't know that they need food, that's not the thing you help. You might say to them, hey, I really like your new blah, 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 or hey, your kids are really nice. But if what they need is help making food at home and you don't know that, you can't help them. Totally. Beautiful website. You're going to see it. Uh, you're going to love it. It's, it's really, really incredible. Um, speaking of which, if you have issues communicating with your partner or if you've had issues communicating with partners in the past and you, wanna, you want some tools, 
definitely check out our Ignited Relationship intro course. Um, it's available on the Ignited website. You just click a link. It's available 24-7, 365. If it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you're up and you don't have anything to do. Or if you're just like in the middle of a fight, you know, on the weekend, you're like, I need to figure out some better tools to get through this kind of stuff. This is the, the right course for you. It's really affordable, super cheap, on purpose so that it can affect and help more people. It costs less than a single therapy session. You have access to it forever. Hundreds of people have taken it and have told us that they use the tools regularly now. It's a really, really beautiful thing. Uh, we'll put a link to that down. I'm pointing down right now, but you guys can't see that. So, um, you know, in the show notes, it'll be there. Okay, I really don't want to make you guys wait because Seb is that incredible. And so excited to share so with you. Let us know out. what you think. Tag us, let us know. Um, give us a couple of your, I mean, if you have a hundred things, amazing. If not, just a couple things. Send oh my us, God, that would be incredible. I mean, that would be amazing. Give us some ideas. Yeah. Like what What would be on your hundred things to do? It's like a really big bucket list um, sort of plan, but you just don't, why wait until you're close to dying? Just start living your life like that. Start your living your life with intention. Such a beautiful, beautiful message. Again, remember, share. Don't forget to tag Seb after the interview because uh, he would love that and some of the love to allow him to keep pushing this message forward, help as many people in the world as possible. Thank you all. Check out philosophy here in a second and we'll see you on the flip side. This episode of the Ignited Podcast is brought to you by Philosophy Superfoods. The philosophy offers cleanses and other nutritional products that are unlike any of the other supplements and detoxification programs on the market. Why? Because they actually nourish the body with whole, live, nutrient-rich foods instead of depriving you and leaving you hungry. Have you ever tried a cleanse only to find out that you can't make it through a whole day because you're starving? Ever try a superfood shake that made you nauseous because it was so disgusting you'd rather not eat? The philosophy fix all that with a simple set of offerings that load up your body with nutrients while actually tasting good. Makes sense, right? Each of the philosophy superfood and protein blends is vegan, raw, gluten-free, and has absolutely no filler ingredients. With over 15,000 satisfied customers, including some of the world's biggest celebrities like George Clooney, Gerard Butler, Leah Michelle, and over 10 years of experience, this is the best stuff you can get. To buy some or find out more info, go to our website, thephilosophy.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Ignited Podcast. Uh, this is our conversation piece here today. And we've got somebody with us today who is going to give you a conversation like you've never heard before and really, really get you excited about what's possible in life. Um, and I met this guy, well, Sophie and I actually met this guy doing yoga on this ridiculous deck in Malibu at this weekend yoga shala thing that uh, a friend of ours used to throw out there. And, you know, he's Australian. And so we kind of, we talked to him a little bit before, but then afterwards, after the yoga event, you had put up a, uh, a poster, a poster board in the back of this house. And you told people to go up there and write essentially what it is that they wanted out of life, something that they wanted to do in life. And initially everybody was a little shy, but then people started going up and putting these little wishes and then people got uh, more and more excited about it and more and more um, daring, shall I say. And you and I started talking because it was kind of an exciting, I mean, i had never heard of this effort and I'll let you tell the story more as we get into it, but I never really heard of this effort at all until that moment, which was about two years ago, but I saw the excitement, right? Right off the bat, I saw everybody getting me really, really excited about the opportunity of being able to do something like this. And then we started talking and you told me about the journey. You told me about what it is that got you to that moment um, in that yoga shala on the deck in Malibu. And if you don't mind, I'd love for you to tell everybody listening right now that story yourself of how you made it there. <laughs> Yeah, well, I remember really well. And it sounds, I mean, it already paints me as too much of a spiritual character. I mean, yeah, I was trying my best to do yoga in a beautiful spot. No, um, well, yeah, that board you referred to, I, it's just, I mean, I guess it's just like a little dream board, essentially. And I, I write what's on your list, which is over time become, I guess, my tagline. And yeah, it's a question I asked myself, you know, probably 10 years ago. Uh, I, I realized I wasn't very happy in life. 
I'd lost a friend. Uh, I had a university degree that was completely like redundant to me. And I had started a business in like events for some reason, because that's what people do, I think. And all those things came crashing down at one point in this realization that I just wasn't really leading a life that was me, reflective of my values or anything. So I just said to myself, what's, what is on your list? What's going to make you smile? And that was the beginning of this journey. So I created a list of 100 things that I thought would make me happy, maybe give me a bit of purpose in life, at least shine a light in some direction because I was just drifting at that stage. And, and as I you know, began to tick things off my list, it accidentally became popular. And then the question I was asking myself was, of course, the question people started asking themselves, which is what's on your list? And you know, that's kind of a very shortened version of how I got to meet you guys at that uh, at the yoga shala um and the board's just like you know a physical representation of that really important question that i think we should all be asking ourselves what's on your list i don't think anything could be more important than prioritizing things that we deem as important to ourselves whether it you know uh, all based around happiness and purpose and passions and all those lovely cliche words right yeah. but um yeah um that, that's it i guess i do a thing called a hundred things and it's it's turned into this big big global movement i'm soaked yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Obviously, I love, you know, it's kind of, it's weird, right? There's, it spans this weird space between being really selfish and introducing happiness back into a society that is so success and achievement driven in a way that I don't think anybody's done in a long time. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting that word selfish. I mean, it's it's kind of like a really negative term, you know. It's, it's an insult. It's a conversation if you anyway, yeah. Yeah, and 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 I don't. I think it's actually crucial. I think it's really important that we look inwards, look at ourselves to see who we are on a deeper level, if possible, right? And, and again, talking about our principles, our values, and the things that really light us on fire inside, passions. And I think if you start identifying things that uh, that are a reflection of those things, I, I think and they can be selfish. I think they should be selfish. Ultimately, what makes you smile? What will make you go to bed happy tonight? What will give you purpose for the week coming, the month, the year, the next decade? And if that stuff is all about you, so be it. And I think, you know, ultimately, I, I talk about this kind of oxygen mask analogy, you know, when you get on a plane and they will say in an emergency oxygen mask yeah. will fall from the ceiling. And then they say very specifically, put yours on first before helping others. And it's kind of, you know, it makes a lot of sense. I never really listened to that, but uh, I have recently, and it, and it does reflect my own life for sure. Um, you know, it's nice to think that you can do everything for everyone else, but unless you've got your oxygen mask on first, you're only going to be able to help a small amount of people and you'll, you'll, you know, you'll burn out. And, uh, you know, so I, I think being selfish is important, but I think it's, it's crucial that you then turn that into a selfless pursuit. And, and, and of course, like with my journey of a hundred things, yes, there were a number of years where I was ticking off various things like, you know, superficial things, living on a deserted island for a week, doing stand-up comedy, doing an Iron Man, what else, skydiving naked, uh, you know, what, all the things that are on this list. But then I got asked... I'm sorry, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, so you can't run past that that quickly. So doing an Iron Man and skydiving naked were on your list? Yeah, had yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Had you done a lot of skydiving before? No, I'd never done it before, which is an interesting point. Went, like, I've never done skydiving... So I'd like to skydive naked. Yeah, yeah. See, in theory, it's brilliant. But the, the, the issue I discovered on the day was I had to actually have to find a instructor willing to strap themselves to me whilst I was there. They were clothed, yeah, while I was naked. So uh, I had to go to France. If you were both naked, it would even be, it would elevate oh. the experience somehow. Oh my gosh. And thankfully, <laughs> thankfully he decided to wear clothes. Um, but he was a really good sport. He was great. And because of him, I was able to do it. And, you know, yeah, I mean, that is, <laughs> and I think, you know, you bring up an interesting point. Lists are very relative. It's very different for everyone, right? It doesn't have to be sure. jumping out of a plane. It could be hugging someone or saying, I love you or saying, I'm sorry, or going back to university or college or, right. you know, starting a business or learning how to yodel. It, it doesn't really matter. It's just, you know, as long as one part of your goal really does resonate with you and with, you know, again, I keep mentioning the values, if it's this adventure, if it's freedom, if it's security, if it's comfort, if it's love, if it's humor, as long as it resonates with some part of you, it's brilliant. Yeah. No, I mean, first of all, I think it's big, by the way, I didn't mean selfish in a bad way, although I totally get the connotation mm. and I, um, I stress with my clients all the time that you have to start paying attention to that internal voice of what you want, because if you don't do that and you don't pay attention to what you want is when you start essentially creating a life around you it sounds like that's where you ended up mm. that could look successful to everybody else 
but feel terrible to you internally. Yeah. I mean, and that just leads straight on to like social media, right? Like, you know, this, this, this uh, highlight reel that everyone shows. Yeah. Um, I don't really think about that stuff, to be honest. I, I just think no matter what you're doing, as long as it resonates with you on a deep level, you're fine. And if it means that uh, you're out there looking amazing uh, in photos, great. And if it means that you don't share one photo, I think that's probably even better, to be honest. Um, but certainly, you know, having done a lot of these things, um, it, it all changed at a certain point when kind of a, there was this sort of accidental spike in popularity with this. And I got asked to like, you know, write a, write a book and do a couple of documentaries. And then out of nowhere, a reality show came my way. And, and then people started asking me for help. And then I, I kind of stopped my list because I really enjoyed the idea of helping others. And, and that's kind of what happened. And the first person I helped was a guy called Mark who had seen me on TV in Australia and he, he had this sort of really sad story. He was completely able-bodied and then he got bitten by a tick uh, in Greece whilst he was backpacking and he became a quadriplegic. Oh, my and God. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's, it, it's, it is just so tragic. There's no nice way of looking at it. And he lost uh, the, the function of his body. He, he can't move a muscle in his body. He can't talk. He needs a 24-hour care team. He's a ventilator to stay alive at night. And wow. Yeah, but this guy, Mark, is incredibly inspiring. He took it upon himself. So I guess he saw like something of me on TV and then he took it upon himself to put a list together. And then he emailed me using a sensor on his forehead as he looks at a giant screen above his bed, I later found out. But this really well-written, very eloquent, very intelligent email saying, hey, um, I want to shave my head. It's number one on my list. Would you do it for me? And I was like, oh, it's such a weird request. But I, I, I did it. I, I went to Melbourne in Australia and I flew there. And I shaved his head and it was amazing. And then as I got to know Mark better, I, I could see how much it meant to him. And I said, what else can I do for you? And he shared with me that on his list was to run a half marathon or complete a half marathon. And of course, he needed someone to push him. And that was the first moment I ever was given an opportunity to do something for someone else. Mm -hmm. And I did it, you know, and it just, it, I was obsessed with the idea and I loved it and I haven't stopped helping since. So that was kind of, you know, if you go back to that analogy my oxygen mask was on and this was the first time I really tried to help someone else with theirs. And, and that was the beginning of what is now a very exciting altruistic mission, which, uh, which we can talk about more. Wow. That's amazing. Did you have any running experience before then? No, I hate running. I, I would run because you know, you're, you're kind of meant to, to keep fit. I've been told. So I, uh, <laughs> no, I didn't tell it him. Wasn't I wasn't like running. a hobby that you enjoyed doing regularly. No, absolutely not. No, that, that is... So you yes. trained for a half marathon and you were pushing him the entire way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, the cool thing about it was it wasn't just me. There were other people who wanted to help too. Uh, people who we prearranged and people who along the, along the run just saw us and went, I want to help. And that's what's... But for me, it was... Mark got across the finish line. He got to achieve his goal. It was amazing. I was a small part uh, in that. I felt amazing. Everyone who contributed felt great. But it was very clear to me at that moment that you know, my belief is that we're all innately uh, designed and wired to help people. We just want to, like that we're yeah. here to connect. You know, the first thing you do as a baby is like hug your mum. Like I, I, we just want to connect. And I, I think the, I, the, the, the issue in our society that I see is that there's not often easy opportunities or avenues to venture down to exercise that kind of philanthropic, altruistic muscle. And it's usually done through organizations or non-for-profits. And, and even that can be tricky. So the, I, I, I'm fascinated by this idea of directly introducing people who want to help to people who need the help on a, yeah. on, a on this peer-to-peer -peer level. And th again, that's kind of fast forwarding up to where I am now with this journey. No longer about a list. It's about trying to activate this switch in all of us to be good to one another. And how are you doing that? You're in Australia now. Right? No, I'm in LA. You're yeah. in LA. Oh, I moved yeah. here like a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so you're here and what are you, is there like a structure to this? Like, is there a website? Is there? Quite literally, as of this week, there is. Okay. So for year, I mean, I, I, oh, geez, I want to talk for hours and hours about this. All right. How do I condense this? Okay. As after I helped Mark, I suddenly got approached by lots of people who needed help and, you know, who really deserved to helping him with certain things, not just people who were disabled, people who are able-bodied, you know, every, just a whole gamut of people. And I just went out of my way to do whatever I could. And I, and I found it really enriching. Uh, the issue, even with my show, I have a show called a hundred things. It's a reality show. I help one person every episode, 26 episodes. It seems what's, glorious and epic. What's it on? What network? It's on this thing called go 90, which is like a Verizon. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, I, 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 yeah, it's on there. But okay. the show is called 100 Things. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called One Hundred Things. I just came out of the blue. I, you know, so I, I, I started helping these people, and it sounds great. But what happened was, if every one person we helped, there were plenty more who we couldn't help, and that, you know, that's an issue for me. I, I hated that. So I was like, well, how do I help these other people? And then I would share their stories online, and complete strangers who are in, within my community would say, we can help them. So manually, I was engaging these people um, through social media to just do acts of kindness. So then I was like, well, I need to automate this because it's slow. It all bottlenecks through me. So I just need to create a platform, a two-sided platform, much like a dating site, but specifically for acts of kindness. And so I was giving a talk here in the US about a year and a half ago. I, I, some, again, something that's accidentally popped up over the last seven years is a, the speaking circuit. You know, I, I speak about 60, 70 times a year around the world about happiness and connection and purpose. And it's all a surprise to me, but it's brilliant and I love it and it's great. And I was giving a talk here in the US and I was just, I had so much interest in people wanting to either invest or partner or, or be brand ambassadors or ambassador, people who needed help, people who wanted it. And I thought, this is it. I'm just going to move to America. So I did. So I moved here and a year and a half later, which is, you know, as of this week, um, this site has just been developed and it's called Kindsum, K-I-N-D-S-U-M. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's that. It's just a meeting place uh, for people who need help to meet people who can help on a peer-to-peer level, non-financial acts of kindness, um, trying to reduce the barrier of entry so anyone can just, you know, do it instantly, anytime, anywhere. And, uh, and, and that's, I'm fascinated by this, you know. Mm. I, I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm fascinated by it. And there's so many cool stories around it. I mean, for example, there were like four inmates. I gave a talk in a prison in San Quentin in San Francisco to a group of inmates who are learning how to code. There's a program called The Last Mile. And The Last Mile teaches inmates how to, you know, program and code so they have a skill when they when and if they get out. And I gave this talk to these inmates, like deep in the heart of a prison, and these four guys approached me afterwards and they said, we can build this for you. And I was like, that's it. That's absolutely the direction I have to go. So wow. I've been having meetings with these four inmates and oh. literally I have the site this week and it's going live tomorrow. By the time this podcast is out, it'll be live. And that's so amazing. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I love about this approach, and I don't know if this is part of your, your purpose behind it, but people don't necessarily have enough opportunities to help. But I feel like oftentimes we've been also trained not to ask for help. So the people who need help have been told that you shouldn't ask for it because if you ask for help, that means you're somehow damaged or less than, et cetera. So this platform gives both sides an opportunity. It gives the people who need help an opportunity to kind of semi-anonymously without having to go to somebody right in their vicinity and, and kind of seem like they're begging for something, be able to put out what it is that they need and what it is that would actually improve their life. And somebody else who connects to that request and to that message and can deliver on it gets to have the opportunity to help. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a really, it's a really interesting point you bring up. I mean, it's seen as almost too weak to put your hand up and ask for help, really. Like that's kind of a lot of people, I don't like really receiving help even, you know, which is kind of the irony of this whole thing. Maybe that's the drive. I don't know. But uh, yeah, the the beauty of this site though, is you can nominate people as well. If I know somebody who needs a helping hand, you can, I can, I can, you know, create a project for them, press, you know, submit and suddenly you're on this map. It's, It's kind of like, if you imagine like a screen on Uber, instead of cars moving around, it's just people who need help and you can just t- touch each one and open it up and go, oh, I can help that person. And some of it's just like, I'm lonely, I need a phone call, you know, and others are very extreme. So it's, it's you know, there's plenty of categories, animals, elderly, um, disaster relief. I've got all these beautiful projects already bubbling and I'm about to put them onto the site. Um, but yeah, it, it certainly allows, because I don't want it also to be like a, you know, like the sense with char- my opinion is, you know, with charity, it's almost seen as like a handout. You know, yeah. someone becomes a inverted commas charity case or whatever. Yeah. And I don't see it that way. I see those people as incredibly brave. Um, and if you if you voice what's something that's very important to you, I think that's very very it's very brave. I think I think it's something to be proud of. And by doing so, you're creating an opportunity that literally did not exist for somebody else to be good, which is ultimately what we're all trying to do. So, you are helping the world revolve as it should. Um, by creating opportunities for people to come in and, and do whatever they can to assist. And, you know, in, in that sense, of course, that, that person, the helper, they also become incredibly brave too. And it's this perfect synchronicity of, of you know, uh, give, take, but really you're both giving and you're both, yeah, it's just beautiful. I just, you know, it makes me excited thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, so this is about to launch as we're speaking. So it's not like you, the automated system hasn't been in place and, and there's no, specifics kind of attached to some of the people who've met on there. I think it's so cool to, to create 
an online community that allows people, I'm assuming a lot of the connections require some offline activity. Yeah, absolutely. Like Mark in the wheelchair. So, so actually, perfect example, even though I'm basing this in LA, but it will, I've got an audience in Australia too, so it'll apply there. But Mark wants to do a marathon, a full marathon this time. And I can't help him because I'm not physically going to be there. It's going to be on the 14th of October. But he needs 20 people to push him. So I put him on the site. He'll be one of the first people I promote looking for 20 people to help him. It's very fitting and like I'm super stoked about that. And no doubt we'll find 20. In fact, I've got people already emailing me before the site's ready just because they know what's happening. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly that. You can just, you know, post a meaningful project if you, if, you need, if you require support or assistance. And it's just this opportunity for anyone anywhere to be able to do something. I mean, even in LA, like I was speaking to a, a girl who's going to be on the site about two weeks ago. She's had re- her, her name's Shana. She's incredible. I met her in person. She's had renal failure. So now she's on dialysis and mm. typically with dialysis, you know, you can last on there between five to 10 years, but towards the 10 year mark, you, you know, your, your health is very, very, very much down and your, your life expectancy is, is you know, way down. Um, unfortunately, the wait list for a, a, a kidney is about 10 years. And so it's almost seen as a death sentence. You know, it's like there are lots of people out there waiting for kidneys. And, you know, if you just sort of go down the regimented, well, let's just wait and hope that someone eventually, you know, we come to the top of the list and we get something as opposed to that, I'm promoting her on the site. And so she's going to get out there, have a voice. And there's already a guy from the East coast of America who's found out about this story through social media. And he said, Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in donating my kidney and he's having a compatibility test right now. So there's, wow. you know, yeah, and again, that's a very extreme thing. You don't have to be of service to someone. You don't have to donate a body organ. You can pick up a phone and call someone who's lonely. And, and you know, an example of that is there's a, a war veteran who I've been speaking to and that they, they're suffering from PTSD and, and just ha- having a hard time, as I'm sure a lot of them do, acclimatizing, right? There's such a uh, – back to, you know, civilian lifestyles. Um, there's such a high suicide rate. And a lot of them are just uh, lonely, or could just use some advice from someone, which is something you can do over the phone. And so I'm promoting a particular war veteran who, you know, I, I've got to know a little bit. And so anyway, I mean, I, as I said, I could talk and bore you with all these stories, but they're, you know, the, the idea is that um, this just becomes this place for people to be confident in asking for help and people to know that it's just a safe and, and loving environment to help. And so there's, there's both online and offline activities. Yeah. Yeah. I love, you know, I always, every like Thanksgiving, I have an issue with... <laughs> how everyone wants to give and like, it's great. You know, like it's wonderful that around the holidays, people want to give on Thanksgiving. It's like the number one day, at least in LA when people volunteer. But what I love about this is that it's all year round. It's all different types of volunteering. I mean, you know, like Thanksgiving, typically what I've seen is people like rush into food banks, rush into like homeless shelter. Like they want to help in that way, which is really great. But like, there's too many volunteers on Thanksgiving, yeah. they need to spread it out. And so I love that this is an invitation to give in whatever way you can, in whatever capacity, even if it's just a phone call all yeah. year round. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's just such a poignant uh, example. Like, you know, say Christmas day in Australia, for example, everyone wants to go and go to a soup kitchen or serve food to the homeless. And it, it, what a wonderful set, you know, how great they want to do that, but it's one day of the year. You know, what happens the other yeah. 364 days? So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's just, yeah, there's daily opportunities for people to be giving back. And it, it can be a home. In fact, there's a homeless person I'm going to put on the site um, who, who needs assistance in some way. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, I just think, I, I think typically what we're told is that you can assist. I mean, monetary donation is the most common way for people, I think, to kind of give back. But what I found with my own journey, and I can only speak to my journey, is that, uh, you know, I haven't needed money to, to be a significant uh, impact to somebody else. Time, care, energy are the things that count more, I think. So, yeah, I think finding and sh- shining a light on these examples so that people can just react and find out that you can really give back very, very simply um, mm. with the right opportunity. Yeah, that's it. again, it, it just fills my mind every single day, every night. So the fact that I'm at this spot where it's now live, I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah. Mm, so cool. I think a lot of people also don't know how to help. And I think that's what's really helpful about this particular program is that, you know, the site and just what you've been doing is that, you know, there are so there's it's all listed out. Like people want to help, I think, but don't know how. So they do the obvious things like a soup kitchen, like mm. 
hand out food, or like or know. even even giving out money is like a proxy way of helping somebody right it's like sure. yeah people need things then there's all this administrative work that has to be done along the way to take the money you gave and and create food out of it or create i mean somebody to push a wheelchair or whatever it is that the actual person yeah. needs it's so much more beautiful to think that we can have a direct impact i mean I can't help but think, you know, this whole podcast is about relationships and I can't help but think about how the fact that you were dissatisfied with your own life and decided to take this trip of kind of creating your really big bucket list and saying, what do I want my life to look like actually morphed into probably more and more fulfilling relationships and more, um, yeah, just fulfilling, just relationships that really deeply satisfy who you are as a person from an endeavor that started out being all about what you wanted to do, but turned out into this completely different mission. And I think that really speaks to the power of taking off the masks, stopping to pretend that you're happy when you're unhappy, um, really reaching out and being able to it sounds like some of the things on your own list, I'd love to hear actually some of the other examples <laughs> on your list that, that led to really interesting conversations with people that you never thought you would have because you just wanted to do something. But in order to do that thing, you needed help. And that's kind of what started this. Absolutely. You know, I, I think what I've obviously learned here, one of the things is that, you know, I sure I'm an individual and I'm, you know, powerful as we all are and stuff, but I'm just one part of like a much bigger thing, you know, whether you call that, you know, like the global community or whatever. So I think it's very natural that once you're looking after yourself, you then have almost like a duty to try and help, you know, if it's one person next to you or if you have a voice and you can help many, many more. Um, but that's why, that's why we're here. Um, so I, I think I'll, it's almost like the story arc that I think just naturally occurs. You know, I, I think you look after yourself and then eventually you realize there's something bigger out there and you, you try and be as best, you know, as, as much as you can of service to, to that community or group or, you know, region or country or family or friendship circle. You know, I, I, I that's what it's all about. Um, yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, we, we've, again, going sort of talking about social media again, we're losing that ability to connect on a meaningful, you know, physical level. And it's, you know, I, I know with charity, you know, I, I'm an ambassador for Make-A-Wish in Australia who I love and I've worked with and raised lots of money for various other charities. But, you know, you donate money now and you don't really feel that sense of complete satisfaction right there's, there's no beginning to end journey you donate fifty dollars or a hundred dollars or five dollars and you you can you know tell a friend about it go yeah i donated five bucks yeah i hope it helps with that charity whatever their cause is yeah. but you know if you look at someone in the eyes you see that they need help they extend their arm you reach out you touch them you help in whatever way you can and you give them a hug at the end that's priceless that and you you know th that's what i think we're missing true pure connection based on genuine authentic need um and and that doesn't seem readily available out there i think there's some stat like you know one in three americans are, are losing faith in in charities the way they're they're structured and i'm in no way saying charities are you know bad i think they're fantastic i love all of them but you know i i think you know as people we do crave something a little bit deeper than just donating money and and trying to volunteer i mean it's tough it's it's tough to go out there and say hey i want to be a volunteer there's red tape there's, you know you've got to sign up for things there's you know a million and hurdles and hoops to jump through and then you know a month down the track you can perhaps do something imagine if that was instant i just saw it like you know you, i'm showing you my phone on skype no one can see this but i'm holding my phone you can do anything on that you can order food you can you know find a boyfriend or girlfriend you can book a flight you can do any you can do absolutely anything um and, and i think the beauty of that is like everyone becomes immensely powerful and influential but in a direct way but there's nothing that's out there that really allows people to help or ask for help directly. Yeah. And I just I think if you do it. that, imagine being able to, imagine having a whole community of people who are all willing to help at the touch of a button. You could just say, Hey, this, there's a desert, there's an earthquake here. We need, uh, we need supplies. And you tell all those people and they go, right, let's just mobilize. And people every, as individuals do their own little thing, but collectively, wow, that's a, you yeah. know, tidal wave of like goodwill and, 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 you know, all the other nice things. So the game changer. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny, I've never really spoken about this until now. I've just been working on my laptop, you know, behind hidden doors <laughs> here in LA. And I'm fortunate to come and speak to people about this occasionally on stage, but I've been very quiet. So even just listening to myself speak to you guys, I just so appreciate this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Hearing myself say it almost for the first time out loud, you know. Uh, so exciting. <laughs> so Congratulations. It's huge. 
and talk, yeah. about a, talk about a 10 year journey, man. I mean, you know, coming again, coming from this place of dissatisfaction to, and turning that into an endeavor. You know, we talked a little bit before the podcast, before we started recording about the fact that when you started creating this platform, everybody was focused on like the business opportunities. What, what sort mm. of business can you create out of this? And that you thought about it and it really didn't feel genuine. And you kind of decided to go this completely different route with, where you're not, there's no financial motivation in it for you. It's just about, let me actually repeat and then scale what it is that I was able to do in my own life. Cause you see the impact you got to feel. I mean, I don't know. We didn't talk much about what your life actually felt like at the beginning when you were dissatisfied with it. But mm -hmm. my guess from the conversation we're having right now is that connection and feeling like you contributed somehow in a meaningful way to society were lacking. Yeah, uh, for sure. I, I didn't know myself and therefore I couldn't really offer myself to anyone else in a productive way at the beginning. You know, I was, I had, a, as I said, a few moments where I, I kind of had that, you know, whatever you call it, what do they call it? An aha moment or something like that. It was like, geez, I'm really like, well, I'm not on the right path here. Mm -hmm. And really, I mean, you talk about relationships. I just think, I, I think you're right. I think everything's a relationship, your relationship with food or money or people, yep. of course. But my relationship with myself was terrible. I didn't know who I was. So to start off with, yes, my journey was absolutely about trying to connect with myself, um, trying to figure out who I was. And, uh, you know, I, I, the, the moment I made that decision, I believe that everything's a choice. I, you know, I don't think we're in the passenger seat of life. I think we're in the driver's seat. We're entirely accountable. And so I think once you give yourself, you know, this word permission, I think if you give yourself permission to make a, a choice, Again, it's a choice. I think you choose to be happy. I think you choose to be sad. You choose to progress. You choose not to progress. Um, you know, I, th th that was the beginning of this thing, which I'm no longer in control of. I had no idea, you know, I had no idea what would happen with this. And it's kind of funny. Like a lot of people are like, oh, wow, you have a TV show and you have like uh, documentaries and a book and, you know, you get paid to speak. And I don't, it's, that honestly is just a byproduct of what I do. And yes, it absolutely feeds back in and promotes a positive message, which is why I love it. But it's only a byproduct of me being passionate and loving what right. I do. Absolutely. Which is initially my list and now helping people. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's so cool about it is, again, guaranteed some of these people write to us, but feeling stuck in one's place in life wasn't unique to you, right? I mean, there are millions and potentially billions of people who feel stuck, but there was something that gave you, you gave yourself permission to go for a completely different solution than yeah. anything that had ever been discussed before, right? Nobody said guaranteed. I've never, we've never talked about this, but guaranteed nobody in your life said, well, why don't you just quit? and just go out there and just see what you are into. <laughs> Not a single human being in your life said that. And somehow that idea came to you, the passion ignited, and you were able to say, I'm just going to go on this search. It was, it, was like, it was like a seeking that you needed. And the reason I think this is important for people to hear is your solution, and I mean that whoever's listening right now, your solution may not be a typical solution that anybody has proposed before. And really connecting to yourself and listening to and maybe exploring what it is that empowers you and gives you that spark can lead down a path that you would have never been able to imagine. Nobody would have ever been able to predict. And yet it's so powerful that it just creates an entire movement behind you um, just by sheer passion. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't like to try and think of why, people will see this as a solution, but I certainly, there's something that you're right. No one ever told me to do this. In fact, when I sort of, when it became clear to me, this is what I needed to do. I had no support, family, best friend, but you know, they, everyone said, you're an idiot. What are you doing? You shouldn't be doing this. You're 28 years old it's when I left. And um, yeah, I, I, I guess it just sort of made sense along the way that the only thing I can truly say that I, that I knew at that point was that it felt right. And, it, and that's what I based everything on. And I still do, you know, it yeah. felt right. And I, and, I, and I went for it. And I, I think, you know, I think, I, again, I don't really like guessing or thinking why 100 things or I might have caused a positive Im impact on others. But I do think that maybe a lot of people see themselves in me. You know, I, uh, we're all just here. Everyone, as you said, goes through a struggle at one, you know, maybe if you're lucky, just once. But, you know, p pretty much is all through life. And it's, uh, you know, there are moments when you can change it or you can choose not to change it. And I chose to, and I'm not special in any way, or in fact, I am really special. I'm as special as anyone else. We all are. Uh. And, you know, like I, I, yeah, but I 
just through simply acting different. It changed my belief system. It changed daily results for me. And that just created a really great habit, a, a different perspective for me on life. And, um, you know, I, I, I know firsthand now that, you know, we, if you don't consider yourself, if you don't follow through on the, on the things that you really truly dream of, you don't become, you don't fulfill your potential, you know? And, uh, yeah. And I feel I'm at the beginning. What's this. your family's and friends take on all this now, 10 years later? Oh yeah. Like, you know, a lot of support, of course. I, I'm very fortunate to have like loving friends, loving family. Um, so yeah, I mean, even though they said, you know, this is stupid, don't do it. Uh, you know, I think they sort of had my back. They hope, you know, they hope the best for me, but it didn't make, cause we, you know, we, 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 we led to live a certain way and think a certain way. And, uh, again, there are people who can speak far more detail than me on this, but just as an observation, you know, you, yeah. we go to school, you go to university, you go to college, you get extra further uh, education somehow. Uh, and then, you know, you use that to get a job, a number of jobs, a career, and then you get money and you save that money and then enough to like buy a house and a wife, <laughs> not that you buy a wife, but I mean, you could, you could I suppose. Yeah. And then like have a family, a couple of cars, you know, all that. Stuff. And then you retire. And like, I'm not to say that's wrong, but that surely doesn't fit everyone. So you've got right. to try and figure out how you fit into the things around you because each one of us ha can have a different journey and it can be as amazing as you want. Um, you've just got to take that step. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love that. So segueing into one of our favorite parts, we're going to ask you five questions. Oh, I'm terrible at this. Okay. You, know, you got this. Well, I mean, that's fine. They're all trivia questions about the history of Bangladesh. So <laughs> oh, that's, my, that's my niche. Good. You okay, got so that. Is that your niche? Perfect. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so uh, the first one is what is the best advice you have ever received? Oh, Oh, I knew. Okay, hang on. All right, let me think about this. Best advice I've ever received. Um, I, I, I won't lie. I can't remember a particular bit of advice that I have got, but I know I have been told multiple times by people close to me or even just strangers, you know, because we all have advice to give, that, you know, that just, and all that advice revolves around this idea of going with your heart. Mm. You know, like I just, I always hear that. And I, and, and, and to me, it's always so warming to, to, to you know, for me too, like to, to hear that. It reminds me of, you know, a way that I, you know, to respect myself, to respect those feelings. There's nothing worse than not following your heart yeah. or not going with an, uh, some sort of intuitive feeling you have. So I just think that's a really important one. Was that something that you feel connected to in your past, even as a, as a kid kind of growing up in Australia, or is that something that came later? Um, Oh, geez. I think it probably came a little bit later. It okay. probably came a little bit later. I remember a bit of advice my dad gave me once, like this just springs up. Um, I, and it was kind of like a quote I think he got from somewhere, but he said, and it's not for everyone, by the way, but I remember him saying this to me. He said, you know, it's better to live one day as a wolf than a thousand days as a sheep. Mm. And, you know, there's something about just grabbing life by the horns and going for it and, and not necessarily just following convention. Yeah. The, I remember he told me that when I was really young and I, and I, and I actually wrote that in my book. Um, so that, that is something I always thought was quite cool. Yeah. Wow. Talk, talk about living that piece of advice later on in life. Yeah. What's your proudest moment to date? Um, okay. Proudest moment. Well, funnily enough, I thought it was going to be at the time when I got my university degree. I went to, to university just because that was the expectation. I just thought that's what you do. My family would be proud. And I remember going to university. It was the most underwhelming thing I've ever experienced in my life. I was oh. just, it just struck. I was like, what have I done? You know, this is ridiculous. I thought this would light up the path. So that was something which I thought would be pr a proud moment, but it wasn't. Um, I think, uh, you know, to be honest, like pushing Mark in, the, in his wheelchair on the half mm. marathon, I, uh, I still, like I talk about that on stage a lot. Uh, and, you know, I, I, do, I do a lot of speaking. And most times I speak about that, I get quite emotional. Because sure. I mean, that uh, first time I really helped someone in a significant way, and I, you know, and I, it was like a discovery for me that that's what I think I'm here to do. I think it's what we're all here to do, and I just I'm so stoked that happened because it's been the trigger for so many more things. So, mm. yeah, um, maybe that was the proudest moment. Mm. Was the proudest moment? I'm just wondering, like, was it when you started out, like as you were starting to push him? Was it when you crossed the finish line? Was there a specific reaction in his face, almost that you could just connect to when you talk about that story? Yeah, I, I I like the process. I, I think the process is something that needs to be enjoyed in every journey, not just the crossing of the you know, yep. metaphorical finish line. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there are certain things. I remember 
it, it was hard to organize. They didn't really want us to be a part of the race. And then we had to sort of argue our way in. So that was a great moment. And I remember standing on the start line with a group of people around me, some I'd never met. There was sort of like four or five of us who wanted to help Mark. And, you know, I, I felt great at that point. And there was, you know, it was, it was hard. Like we, it took us like, you know, four hours, I think, to run a half a marathon, yeah. which, is, which is very slow, but who cares? And I just remember every single step of the way, it was just amazing. People coming over mm-hmm. and just like patting Mark on the, you know, Mark, Mark can't move. So they were patting him on his arm and just on his leg and they go, good on you guys. And people joining us. And I remember that being phenomenal. And then, yeah, finishing. It was just, uh, even though Mark, as I said, is very limited in any movement, really, you could just see in his eyes how happy he was. He crossed the finish line, a complete stranger would come over and hug him. Oh. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. So beautiful. That's beautiful, yeah. man. That really, really is. Um, not to turn it on you too quickly, but what has been your hardest moment to date? Uh, well, this is something that is, this is interesting. So, you know, they say like every story and maybe I haven't got there yet, but needs like a, 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 you know, a moment of jeopardy or, you know, something like a big, Oh my God, am I doing the right thing? I, I can honestly say that since choosing to pursue this journey just over nine years ago, um, I haven't had that once. Mm. I haven't had, there hasn't been, I mean, it depends, I guess, what your definition of hard or, you know, what, what a difficult day is, but I just know I'm doing the right thing. And I, I know, it, I feel it. Um, I'm so glad it's not about me anymore. Otherwise it'd be boring. I wouldn't speak. I don't, you know, who really cares about a story about a guy who's jumped out of a plane naked, right? Yeah. I mean, anyone can talk about goal setting on that level. So I'm stoked that it's just naturally morphed into this kind of helping thing now. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, a lot of people like security, like a paycheck and all that kind of stuff. And that's certainly not what I have. I'm, you know, like, uh, day-to-day event to event i'm not one of these like entrepreneurial strategists that has an online uh you know residually i don't don't even know what the words are but like you know i'm not getting passive income from anything uh you know i'm just i'm speaking and tv shows pop up occasionally and books pop up but i don't really worry about it so uh, so i I don't find that difficult others might um no i I don't know i okay i don't know i like the challenge you don't you don't have to you don't have to come up with one if you don't have one i love it yeah, we don't we don't make you. I think even hard is relative, and that's what you're saying. Is it's just yeah. relative. Like, what is hard? Like, there's hard, there's struggle, and everything. But if you're living your truth and you're living in your integrity and you're walking your path, and every day you wake up inspired, then the struggles are just part of what. Yeah, absolutely, life. absolutely. And I also like why not just choose a life of no resistance? Life should be easy. I think we're here to flourish. I think if you tap into you know again in of commas flow and you're going with, you know, your, your, your intention and all those things you just mentioned. Oh my gosh. Like we, yeah. Wow. How great. And how lucky, how lucky am I to like get up and do what I love every day, even if the money is not X. And even if there are some struggles and it's not like the easiest thing in the world, like how lucky am I to have two legs that work and two arms that work and a brain that's highly functioning and a family, you know, all the things like it's, It's a privilege to have struggles, you know, at our level. Oh, I like that. That's cool. Yeah, it is. It is a privilege. You're right. You're right. And it would be like, it would be how like narrow minded to think that, you know, uh, you, you, we're only here to benefit from the privilege of being, you know, successful or happy or the, the opportunities we have to attain, whatever it is that we choose to attain it. You need everything. You need the light. You need the dark. It's beautiful oh, to have both. Yeah. It's absolutely. what makes you whole. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then what about self-care? Do you have certain rituals each day or <laughs> week or month? Um, so I think, so I live in like Marina del Rey, Venice in, in LA. I think I'm the only person here who doesn't have rituals. Um, I, and I feel, again, I almost feel like uh, a fraud not having them. But that's well, just is there true. something when you wake up that like you have to have a certain type of coffee drink or is there something that like gets you in the right headspace or something? No. <laughs> no. You're like, no, I, whatever no. works. No, whatever works. I, 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 so let me think about this. I'm just thinking out loud. I mean, you're, people listening now are probably just tuning out going, this guy's crazy. Um, no. Not, not even I, uh, So no, no, not at all. I'm really, I, I, uh, I, I think being like malleable and flexible and being able to do whatever you do in whatever environment is important. I completely get the idea of being mindful and meditating and all that kind of stuff. It's never really, it's never really tr- been drawn to me. I, I've never done it. Uh, I, I have done it, actually. I just didn't really. I just, I don't know. It didn't seem to be doing anything for me. However, I, I know it's brilliant for people. Uh, I surf a lot. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. But okay. yeah. Like yeah. Do you go out every morning or how often do you go out? 
Yeah, I go out pretty much every morning. I haven't been for the last two days, um, and, uh, and 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 I I feel like, you know. I just feel terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there you, so, go. there you go. By the way, yeah. for a lot of people, I mean, obviously, this is a, an obvious statement, but for a lot of people, meditation is, I mean, surfing is meditation. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to be so focused in the moment on what it is you're doing. There's not yeah. really a lot of opportunity to take yourself out of the moment, which is beautiful. It's nice. Yeah. Well, maybe all that didn't make sense. Maybe my answer is just simply surfing. <laughs> yeah, I do have routine. Not, it's surfing. I, yeah. I know a lot of people for whom that is the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so this podcast is called Ignited. I think you already gave us the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What is it that gets you ignited? What gets you going? What gives you the spark and what gets you just super excited? Um, I just living on purpose, just living on purpose, knowing what I'm passionate about and doing everything I can to create goals um, that are reflective of that passion. You know, that, that's living on purpose, like not just yeah. the crossing the finish line, but every single step of prepping for that race, for then doing the race, uh, whatever your race is, because we're all different. I just think that's crucial. And we all have the ability to do it. And it, like, it's such a sad state of affairs that some people think that uh, they don't deserve that. But, we, yeah. you know, we all deserve that and we all should be doing that. That's why we're here. We're not here to just, you know, become grey matter and, you know, fit in. We're here to flourish, and I, you know, that's the one thing that I love. That's what ignites me, and and you know, hopefully, that's what, uh, yeah, something that other people will take on board and 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 do in their own life if they're not already doing it. Mm. I love it. That's so amazing. Um, thank you for joining us. What was the name of the website again? Kindsome dot com. Yeah, so we'll, have, we'll have a link for that, and we'll have a link to some of your talks and some of the other things. Um, look, man, I think it's such an incredible journey you've had. And obviously it's actually right. Even just at the beginning, I mean, from, from talking to you now and talking to you a year and a half, two years ago, when we first met, it's pretty obvious that you're nowhere near done getting this mission on board. And whether that means more speaking, more opportunities to reach out through this app and, um, and website, being able to scale your approach of just, Hey, just reach out, help somebody in need right now in a way that doesn't serve you just back to good old fashioned helping. Right. Um, I think it's yeah. beautiful and it's some, something we need so, so much of in society. There's so many people who feel completely isolated and as if, as you just mentioned, they don't deserve the help. And so um, it sounds like what ignites you is going to ignite a lot of other people just by proxy, just by getting attached to it, which is mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. And it'd be like really silly of me not to say like if, and I, you know, even if I didn't have a website, I'd say this, but like, if there's anyone out there who genuinely is like drawn to this idea of helping someone, because you can, everyone can help like instantly. If you find the person, um, go to kindsome.com and have a look. I mean, it's just beginning. So like, I, you know, it's not full of thousands of people yet, but I hope it will be one day. If it works, it'll be great. Yeah. And yeah, and I don't, think, it, I don't there, think it's going to take that long for it to start getting no. to the hundreds of people and then thousands. This is something that serves a need that people didn't even know they had. Mm. but I think as soon as people hear about this, even on this, right, the whatever, 30,000 people a month that listen to this thing, um, we'll just go, oh my God, I didn't know I could connect in that way, whether I need the help or I'm yeah. able to provide it. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's exciting. And it's so nice to touch base with you after a while and, and to hear what you just said about, you know, it seems that I'm different and I'm still driven and it's like, it's a really good kind of like check-in for me too. Like I, you know, I, I feel that way and it's nice to, it's nice to get a, a comment about that just because it's like, oh, good, great. I'm not kidding myself. I am like that. I think as soon as no, no, no. you ever see me like in a hammock with a cocktail, come over and kick me and say, hey, you're not done. <laughs> like, <laughs> because you know, well, you're not. We should be like this till our dying day. Right. You should be able to take a little time for self-care for yourself too, though. But I totally get you what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe only like 30 minutes to an hour in the hammock. Last Our, question. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Do you have a girlfriend? No, no, I don't. <laughs> Just, just I, uh, I did have a girlfriend uh, and, uh, and it didn't work out. A completely amicable, great friends now, but no, I'm currently single. Why do you ask, by the way? I'm, I'm intrigued. Because my listeners are going to ask. You're a oh, catch. Yes. You're a catch. <laughs> okay. I've well, got some great it. girls here in LA. Oh, that's great to know. We can talk offline about that. <laughs> Double date. Double date. Okay. Thank Yay. you so much for joining us. Thank you for everything that you're doing and the message you're pushing out. We need it more than anything almost in this world right now. Um, and I wish you all the best. We can't wait to see how many people join you in the first couple of months here, man. You're, you're legends. Thank you so much for an opportunity to chat about it. Thank, Thank you. you so much, man. Have a good one. <laughs> see you guys. Thank you everybody for listening to the Ignited Podcast. We were so happy to have you along for this ride. 
please go and subscribe to this. Leave us a review. We love hearing from you. And if you want more, don't forget to go to ignited.com where all the podcast episodes are available with show notes and so many of the little details and links from each one of these interviews. And you can look at all the future events that we have going on, all the things that make Ignited so special, even beyond this recording. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next week.